Good evening, Ghana, and welcome to Worldview with me, Irubad Ibrahim. Earlier this week, poignant images of unarmed citizens um, shot dead and um, shocked the whole world. Uh, this decades-old debacle has to do with the historic city of Jerusalem, a sacred city that is cardinal to three major religions of the world, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Tonight we ask, is the city of Jerusalem Israeli or Palestinian? And what do these events mean for global peace and stability? To help me do the discussion is to my immediate left, Mr. Kofi Bonin, a legal practitioner. Sir, you're welcome. And then we have Reverend Albert Douglas Ofori. He's a lecturer with Heritage Christian University College. Sir, you're welcome. Thank you. Before we kickstart the discussion, let's go for a short clip on Palestine and the city of Jerusalem. Do stick and stay with us. to break with decades of U.S. policy and recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed the decision, saying it reflected that the Jewish people have had a capital for 3,000 years and that it is called Jerusalem. But the move upset the Arab world and Western allies. The decision was popular with many conservative and evangelical Christians who voted for Trump and Pence. Mr. Trump acted under a 1995 law required the United States to move its embassy to Jerusalem. But former President Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama consistently signed waivers. Jerusalem is a city sacred to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and each religion has sites of great significance there. Jerusalem has been fought over for thousands of years by its inhabitants, and by regional powers and invaders including Egyptians, Babylonians, Romans, early Muslim rulers, Crusaders, Ottomans, the British Empire by the modern state of Israel, and its Arab neighbors. Israel regards Jerusalem as its eternal and indivisible capital, although that is not recognized internationally. Palestinians say East Jerusalem must be the capital of a future Palestinian state. Jews call the city Jerusalem, and Arabs call it al quds meaning the holy. At the heart of Jerusalem, Old City is a hill known to Jews as the Temple Mount, and to Muslims as Al-Haram Al-Sharif, or the Noble Sanctuary. It was home to the Jewish temples of antiquity, but all that remains above ground is a restraining wall for the foundations built by Herod the Great. Known as the Western Wall, this is a sacred place of prayer for Jews. Within the house of the wall are two Muslim holy places, the Dome of the Rock and Aqsa Mosque, which was built in the 8th century. Muslims regard the site as the third holiest in Islam, after Mecca and Medina. The city is also a pilgrimage site for Christians, revered as the place where they believe Jesus Christ preached, died, and was resurrected. In 1947, the United Nations General Assembly decided that then British rule Palestine should be partitioned into an Arab state and a Jewish state. But it recognized that Jerusalem had special status and proposed international rule for the city, along with nearby Bethlehem, to be administered by the UN. That never happened. When British rule ended in 1948, Jordanian forces occupied the old city and Arab East Jerusalem. Israel captured East Jerusalem from Jordan in 1937, Middle East War, and annexed it in a move not recognized internationally. In 1980, the Israeli parliament passed a law declaring the complete and united city of Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel. But the UN regards East Jerusalem as occupied, and the city status as disputed and resolved by negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. The king of Jordan retains a role in ensuring the upkeep of the Muslim holy places. Since the announcement, there has been tension. Palestine protests in Jerusalem, Gaza, and the West Bank. The protests culminate on May 15th, a day Palestinians traditionally lament homes and land lost as Israel was created in 1948, giving extra significance this year because it falls on the day after the U.S. Embassy move. You will come back, and tonight we ask, is Jerusalem the capital of Palestine or of Israel? Council. I'll begin with you. This sacred city has been the reason for so much bloodshed. The crusades in medieval times and in recent times, and the wars we've seen over Jerusalem. What makes this city so unique and significant? <coughs> uh, thank you very much. Viewers, we are happy again to be here. Um, Jerusalem 
Well, we can only talk about the little the religion that we've done and the little history that we know um, from biblical times. We know the value of Jerusalem. We know how Jerusalem has been very uh, pivotal to Israel. We know about the Jewish uh, history and uh, the way they had to come from the wilderness to come to the holy city as it were. So no all that has gone on. I remember when we were doing um, VK, we had this uh, from the intuition of the monarchy to the, to the fall of the northern kingdom and all of that, you know, Judah and uh, uh, Jerusalem itself. Yeah. Our Christ himself also had the uh, prospect of the uh, fall of Jerusalem. Okay. But you see, life is it is. Yeah. It's a moving you know, situation. Okay, come um, from the clip that uh, we had, uh, the reference is made to what the UN you know, came about 1947, declaring um, uh, Jerusalem or Israel, creating yeah. a, a, a Palestinian and then an Israeli state. Yes, sir. You know, with Jerusalem as a central you know, part of that. We are part of it, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? For the Jews themselves, and then part of it for the Palestinians, especially if you look at what happened in the 1967 war. Okay. Um, it's a very delicate situation for Christians, you know, for Jews, for uh, Muslims, and um, I think the UN tried, in a manner, in some diplomatic manner, okay. to try and create a situation where. The people would have uh, coexisted. Yeah. Indeed, if it is the third holiest you know, site for the Muslims after Mecca and Medina, yeah. um, the question you start asking yourself would be what would be the first you know, holiest site for, the, uh, for Israel? Okay, what would be the first? But it appears that Jerusalem is their holiest. Okay. You know. okay. So it's a very interesting thing. Okay. And how to carve something? that can create a situation where the three of them, uh, Christians, Muslims, and uh, uh, Jews, can live together. You know, I think that is the core. But you see, the reality is today, whether that has been achieved, and whether given you know, the volatile situation in the Middle East, we need to maintain this way or move forward. You know, what do we do? Okay, so I think that as time moves on, Religion is a very, very delicate issue. You know, it's sometimes it's not even about law. It's about belief systems and things like that. You know, so if you are dealing with issues that have to do with the individual beliefs of people, you are very, very careful not to trample on you know, people's uh, uh, feet and things like that. So that is where the uh, delicateness is, you know. We, we can't make a look at Trump as okay. a character. Okay. But indeed, okay. that, that is the problem. The okay. problem is, if we leave it the way it is, is it working? Is it appropriate? Okay. If we change it to the way he is trying, do we take out the Christians? How would the Catholics, others, you know, see that? Okay. How the rest of the world see it? Okay. So we maintain the situation, or we take even you know, some drastic action and see what happens. Okay, Council. Okay, Council. That's an interesting preamble. Um, Reverend. Mm -hmm. um, council makes a strong point that the main principle that undergirds the struggle over Jerusalem is religious. Mm -hmm. But we read all over that God is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. So why does Palestine not take Ramallah as its capital, as it is, and Israel, Tel Aviv? Okay, that is, that is a very good question. But then, um, maybe let me go back a little and explain the historical background to the problem. Yes, sir. Um, as um, he rightly said, um, both Christians and Jews believe that um, Israel, not just alone, you know, that, that land Israel was given to the descendants of Abraham. God wanted to create a nation out of one person through which the Messiah would come to save the world. And so um, we know that, yes, they, they were slaves. The, the sons of Abraham were slaves in Egypt okay. for about 430 years. Okay. And then God delivered them through the, uh, Moses. 
and then he showed them the land, he fought their way, and captured the land, and stayed there. Uh, it's believed that they went there around 1200 BC. And um, they were there, but before they went there, God warned them that if they go to the promised land, and then they rebel against him, he will scatter them all over the world. And they went there, disobeyed God, and therefore God also, um, as he said, scattered them. Um, the first um, scattering came around 721 BC when the Assyrians took the Northern Kingdom into exile. Um, and they did not come back. The remnants, Judah and Benjamin, still became stubborn. And then the book of Nebuchadnezzar, God asked Nebuchadnezzar, ordered him to, to take them into exile for 70 years. They went into exile for 70 years. When Cyrus defeated Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Cyrus allowed them to return around um, 444 BC. They came, and when Nebuchadnezzar came, he destroyed the temple and destroyed Jerusalem. Yes, when they were returning, the leaders were Ezra, Nehemiah, and Zerubbabel. They returned. Zerubbabel saw to the rebuilding of Solomon's temple. Yeah, uh, it was not nice because they didn't have money, and they had been Ezra for about um, 70 years. And so when Herod the Great came, he, he tried to renovate the temple uh, over a period of 46 years, and the temple became very beautiful. Um, you see, when the Israelites returned, um, they never controlled themselves again, because uh, when the book of Israel took them into exile, uh, they returned under the Medo-Persians. Then Alexander conquered the Medo-Persians, so Israel still came under the Medo-Persian rule. Then um, the Romans in 63 BC conquered Alexander, the Greek Empire, and so they came under the Roman rule. Um, they were under the Roman rule when, uh, I have cut the story short because maybe, but they were under the Roman rule when Jesus was born. Yeah. And Jesus came, they did not believe in Jesus. The Jews did not believe in Jesus. The Romans were controlling them. Um, around 66 BC, the Jews tried to rebel against the Romans. And they, 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 they fought the Romans for four years. So by AD 70, the Romans conquered them, destroyed the temple, destroyed the, the Jerusalem wall, and uh, scattered some of them to North Africa, etc. Um, they tried another rebellion around 132 to 135 AD, and the Romans got angry, and they, 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 they scattered them more, and then they prevented them from rebuilding the temple. The Jews believed that so long as they had a temple, then God was with them. And so the Romans prevented them from rebuilding the temple. The Romans ruled Palestine, including Jerusalem, for about 539 years, from 63 BC to 476 AD. When, then, when the Romans themselves were defeated by the Germanic tribes, etc. Um, later, when Islam came to the scene around 622, Islam also conquered the, 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 those who were controlling Palestine at that time. And so Palestine and Jerusalem came under Islamic or Muslim rule for some time until the Crusade was. As the Crusades were able to conquer the land for just about maybe let's say 100 years, not up to 100 years. Then the land came under Muslim control again. And then the Muslims controlled that land. So the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire, good. When the Muslims took over um, the land where the mosque was, you know, the Romans prevented the Israelites from rebuilding the temple. And so when the Muslims took over, they decided to put up their mosque at the very place where the temple was, the temple mouth. Yeah, two mosques were built there, the Dome of the Rock and then Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Muslims also believed that when Muhammad was going to heaven, he passed through the very place where the temple was, Surah um, so 17. 17, chapter yeah, 17. Yeah, yeah, one to three. Yes. And so um, when the British conquered the Ottoman Empire during the Second World War, um, Palestine came under British control. And then during the Second World War, sorry, First World War, 15, uh, 1917, 
Then when the Romans uh, saw the British conquered the Ottoman Empire, and then they took control of Palestine around uh, 1917. The Ottoman Empire controlled that land for 400 years, 1517 to 1917. Um, then the Second World War came, and um, when the Jews, the, 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 the Jews were persecuted, Germans tried to, as if they killed about 6 million of them. In the Holocaust. Yes, and so the, the, the world felt sympathetic, sympathy towards the Jews. And so, um, as my brother said, yeah, the UN around 1947 decided to create two states, one for the Jews and then the other for the Palestinians. The U UN said that they wanted to make Jerusalem an international city, so they were not prepared to give it to any of the, two the protagonists or the, the two fashions. Um, the Palestinian Arabs refused. They decided that they were not agree. And so the, around 1948, 1949, there was some skirmish war, let's put it this way. Um, um, uh, Reverend, yes. um, we appreciate the historical antecedent, yes. and I believe given ample time, you would take us through history up to Yom Kippur. Yeah. War. But, uh, Councillor, I'll come to you, and we look at UN conventions and all that. We are Ghanaians, we own this land. Yes. Do you own a piece of land because of how long your ancestors have controlled it or because you are on it currently? Very difficult question. Very, very difficult. Um, you use, uh, you use um, a Ghanaian scenario. Um, we, those of us in Ghana, you know, we, 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 our ancestors migrated to this place from maybe old Ghana. That's why maybe we went for the name. Yeah, when we came here, well, we don't know whether there were some people who were living here or not. Then we've been here since over a thousand years. And um, that's the problem in Palestine. Then the, those the Palestinians who were born there, they've lived there for over a thousand years. Then a group of people come and then they say that um, this land was for our ancestors. Though the truth with the, uh, the, the, the Israeli program is that the, the, although at the time that the Muslims were controlling the land, some of the Jews were still living on the land. You see, so they did not leave the land completely. They were still living there. Okay, Reverend, I'll come back to you. Yeah. And Council, Reverend has given us a history. Uh, where do UN conventions come in and how are they bi binding on the two factions to ensure peace and live side by side as neighbors? The problem is, after the World Wars, we have the first one of the League of Nations, and then we have the United Nations after the Second World War. Yeah. And the point is that we've got to live together as, uh, as a people, uh, peoples of God. You know, so if we have to live together, what do we do? So that the UN, as a body at the time, that was universal in nature, um, comprising almost all nations, you know, at the time, uh, those who were independent. Uh, it was felt that you needed to come up with some arrangement, some understanding that could have some binding effect so that you could live in it together. All UN you know, resolutions and uh, whatever they come out, conventions, I think that's the basic thing. That's right. How we can live together. And it has some binding force to ensure that whatever resolution, whatever convention that is there, you could implement it. But you see, the truth of the matter is that at the time, after the Second World War, when you had these superpowers, yes, then the point was that if you could have any resolution or convention or whatever, that could be backed you know, by some force, then these superpowers must, to some extent, you know, agree. If you don't agree, then you're going to have a problem. And that is why with the UN, you have the permanent security in so members. And if the thing is that if one of them, any one of them, is not satisfied and then decided to veto whatever, whatever, then it means that, okay, we have to leave it there, at least for peace. 
Nobody wanted a third Gulf War. And so that has been the situation. Otherwise, if the UN felt that, look, you have these uh, Muslims who have been there, you have the Christians, you have the, you know, the, the Jews themselves in here. So if you have a situation like that, how would you claim and say that, look, let's give it to the Christians, or let's just give it to the Jews or to the Muslims? You know, and he realized that you could not, uh, the spell of the movement, just be able to single out one you know, country or religion, whichever way you wanted to look at it. So I think that at the time that that thing was done, it was uh, something that was felt to be conveniently acceptable. Okay. All right? Yes, sir. And when you have a situation like that, Israel had always you know, had very strong American support. And it had appeared that all these years, because America became extremely uh, strong after the First and Second World Wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if America supported you, then it was like, you know, you had a godfather who was so strong and so sometimes you could also show your muscle. And I think that has been what, what, what history has taken us to after this time. If America were not there, then you would start asking you know, some questions whether this particular you know, UN uh, resolution will be binding on Israel or how Israel will react to that. Okay. But we also know the Jewish um, you know, lobbying and strength, money, intellectual ability and all influence in the US. Yes, sir. Okay? So there are a lot of scientists and inventors who are of Jewish and they have a very strong you know, influence in Israel. Yes, sir. You know, so given all of that, the point really is, what do you do? Uh, you take the Palestinian situation. This is a very, it's a religious matter. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you are talking, you have to also uh, understand religious sensibilities. I'm a Christian, you know, but I know that this matter, the way it is, you need to be very careful in terms of the pronouncement that you make. Mm -hmm. So okay. you see, yes, one would say that, okay, you can look at it. Why don't you, if I say, why don't you give it to the Christians? Then also, why don't you give it to the Jews? Or why don't you give it to the Muslims? If all of them have had some real interest in that, it is reasonable internationally yes, you know, to have a diplomatic arrangement that will keep the three you know, together. Right now, the Christian side of it is not so strong as the Muslim and Jewish you know, thing. That is what is very, very powerful. The Christians were Catholic, you think that you can go to Rome and you know, things like that. I mean, the uh, British, they have their Anglican system, you know, Archbishop of Kanji, mm -hmm. so they can also. And then the Muslims with, you know, the, um, with Mecca and uh, the king of uh, Saudi Arabia, and also. You know, so when you have a situation like that, you know, so it's like, how do you create a balance? You cannot straight away say that okay the UN has said this and you want to see to its complete you know um, implementation mm. so we are in a kind of quagma yes, right sir. as for Trump if we come to him he is not a diplomat I think that's one thing that yeah we will we'll soon talk about yes, the contemporary so, issues yeah, so I think that is that is the danger that okay. we have you see, okay. because if you decided to even go ahead okay. you know, to fight it Okay. Who should, you know, you know, because I don't know Russia, for example, I don't know where Russian uh, influence, I mean, support really is, whether to the Jews or whatever. Okay. You know, the Jews, whether they are of a huge number or so, I think they are quite influential, okay? okay. The Arabs too have a very huge number, mm -hmm. very huge number, with the oil, power and all. So it's like, you know, what to do to make sure okay. that the system Thank you, is Council. sustainable. Council, that, Council is itching to address the Trump factor in the whole of this, but we'll get there soon. Uh, Reverend, how did we get here? Would you blame it on former colonial masters? Two major events, the First World War, uh, Sykes-Picot, yeah. and the redrawing of the map of the Middle East after the Second World War, the Balfour Declaration. Yes. Who created this problem? Is it Western powers or who well, did? Um, I want to look at it at um, two angles political and religious. Um, religiously, and according to the Bible, according to Jesus Christ, um, he said that the Gentiles would trample upon the Jews until the Jews um, 
will gain their independence. In Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 28. And Jesus said, when the Jews gain their independence, when they are able to rule themselves again, it's a sign that his coming is near. So, since Jesus promised, and all the prophets uh, of God also promised that the Jews should be taken over by the Gentiles. And Gentiles here, yeah, we're talking about all those who control the Jews from 586 BC up to um, 1948. Yes, so they justly, Christians and they just believe that Israel is going to be restored. And the, the most Israelis believe that the restoration will, 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 take, will be that they will conquer all their lands. Not only, so they still believe that even the land that has been given to the Palestinians uh, was given to them wrongly because the land belongs to them. That is that, well, that side. Then the other side is political. Um, can we say the hand of God was in it? Or UN decided that, okay, we needed to bring peace, and therefore let's divide this land. Then ask, let's ask ourselves what, that, what they did. Has it brought peace? Or we still have program? Then the other side of it is um, the Jews. Currently, their population is about 20 million worldwide. American Jews alone, uh, they are about 10 million. The Jews that live in the, the other half, in Israel today, they are about 7 million. Then Arabs and others are about 2 million. So the population of Israel today at Israel, 9 million. Then let's look at Palestinians. The Palestinians, where were they? Have 12 million people. They have 12 million people. 5 million live at both West Bank and Gaza. 7 million are refugees in Arab lands. And they are also designed to go home because the land belongs to them. You see. So the problem is not just about Jerusalem. It's about uh, the, the Palestinians, they want to go home. The Israelites or the Israelis are 10 million in America, about 3 okay. million in Russia. Okay, Reverend, Reverend, sorry, you have to hold on a bit. We'll come back to yeah. the studio. We've been joined on the phone by um, a lecturer at Telegon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy, and Dr. Ken Ahosu. So, good evening, and thanks for making time. Yeah, good evening. Um, we are discussing Jerusalem. And yeah, hello. Yeah, good evening, Doc. Can you hear me, Doc? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm driving. I just parked so I can speak to you. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, Doc. Okay. okay, since you are not home, you didn't catch the earlier, you know, part of the discussion. Jerusalem yeah, has I come up for discussion, and we are asking today, whose fault is it that we've gotten where we are today on the issue of Jerusalem? Well, um... The issue of Jerusalem has a long-standing history, and uh, it is this history that divides the Jews, and for that matter, the Muslims. Um, the Jews claim, those that um, are aspiring to Zionism, believe that Abraham actually paid for the land of Cana, uh, which includes Jerusalem. And for that matter, there is a repeat that they hold from the ancient times to now, and they have been displaying this receipt that they actually, their ancestors actually bought the land. Now, when Israel was created after the Second World War, Jerusalem was not part of it. Uh, it was Tel Aviv that was um, the capital of uh, Israel. But then during the 1967 war, that the Arabs attacked the Jews, and um, uh, they almost overran Israel, but eventually Israel overcame them. Israel is a number of lands, and this land, the part of it is Jerusalem, part of it is the Golan Heights. And um, according to international law, or modern international law, uh, these lands are illegally occupied. Uh, but then, Israel still stands by that Abraham agreement that they have bought the land, and for that matter, the land belongs to them. And the issue that we have today was that this has been a contentious issue in international relations and world politics. And um, the two sides have claimed Jerusalem as their bona fide capital. 
um, the, the Jews believe that Jerusalem should not be divided, but then the Arabs or Palestinians believe that Eastern Jerusalem should be their capital. And this has been on the negotiating table until Trump came and then uh, passed this resolution. Americans feared that they are moving their embassy to Jerusalem. So for that matter, they are what, recognizing Jerusalem as what, the capital of what, uh, Israel. No. And uh, it's a contentious issue. A number of states have what, recognized it and a number of states are against it. Doc, with the carnage we've seen in the past few days, would you say this move by Donald Trump um, has nailed the last coffin on a two-state solution to the crisis? Well, what I would say is that uh, unfortunate as the carnage that we've seen, the violence that we've seen, and uh, the destruction that followed, Unfortunate uh, as it is, I think that the issue should not be so much attached to the country, but the, the substantive issue should be looked at. Uh, that is the contention of what uh, Jerusalem as the capital of the two sides, Palestine and Israel. The violence that came with it can be dealt with separately as uh, what violence, but then the issue remains: had there not been any violence at all? the contention of where Jerusalem belongs to would continue to be. But then, uh, so in order to move forward, we must not uh, what, mangle uh, the violent issue or add it to what, the substantive issue that it is. If we are going to treat the violence, we should treat it separately and treat uh, the, uh, the uh, Jerusalem issue also separately. So what I think is important here is that a uh, lot of countries, even Western countries like Great Britain, which are very close to Israel, have said that this, these issues must be left for what? By partisan discussion, that is that they must, the two sides must discuss it and eventually come to an agreement. By that, it should not be what? Uh, supported by United States, the manner they have done. Uh, but beyond that, that is beyond my limit. I can only make commentary and say okay. that the context, contentious issue is that okay. Abraham has paid for this land and the okay. Jews are in possession okay. of that okay. one. Uh, receipt that they have paid for the land. Okay. Uh, but over the years, it has been under the jurisdiction of Palestinians. Okay, uh, but then that said and done. That is all I can comment on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Ken Ahosu, a lecturer with Legon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy. Rev, I will do a snap one. Okay. Um, do you think there's, he mentioned Zionism yes. and Benjamin Netanyahu has not budged yeah. in his entrenched position. Yeah. Is Judaism one thing and Zionism another? An uncompromising political Well, movement? Zionism is maybe an adjective that's the word used to describe the policies of the Israelites. Yeah. Um, they, yes, they are people over the years, whatever they, they, they found themselves, they are separate. Everything that they did, their religion, their way of life, their culture, whether they are in America, any part of the world. And so, uh, it appears they are distinct people, and that's why people describe them as Zionism. They think um, they need to protect the land that God gave them. That's the, the, the policy of every Jew, every leader that comes. And so um, I will say that because they have that policy, they are practicing Zionism, well, depending upon how one describes it. Okay, Doc. There's a question from a viewer. Yeah. The name Jerusalem, mm -hmm. is it Arabic or Jewish? Um, according to the Bible, the land, the, the city belonged to people who were called Jebu Jebusites. And then David actually conquered the city from the Jebusites and um, named it the city of God. And, and that is, yeah, that is uh, yeah, I think it's Hebrew. Um, and I'm not 100% sure, oh, okay. but I believe it's Hebrew. Okay, thank you. And counsel, you were itching to talk about contemporary issues. Don't you think this guy, Donald Trump, is taking a decision, a radical move that will eventually lead to 
open warfare in the region. The Camp David Accords and all the terms in it have all been thrashed by this move. Very, very difficult situation, and uh, what works with Trump is that because he doesn't present himself as some intellectual, you understand, and a diplomat, yes, he wants to be wrong, okay, and because of that, you know, he takes certain decisions that otherwise people with some diplomatic bent or intellectual sensitivity would want to take some time think over the whole thing and things like that. So that is the thing. You know, because we have to look at the way he's handling the Korean issue, for example, right? And whether that is working or not working, you may realize that maybe because of that, whatever decision he took about the Korean thing, it appeared that no Korea is prepared, you know, to negotiate now. It appears. And the man too, after getting that, he still feels that he must show some strong arm, you know, uh, that, that is the thing about Trump. We need to look at him very carefully. But sometimes the way he behaves, you say that oh, this person is, excuse me, mindless. But I think that to him, he knows what he wants and what he's going for. You see, one is a campaign issue, yes, okay. But two, practically, can we have the two of them? On the same land. Or sharing the same capital. You see, you see, then let's face it. Where Israel is surrounded by these Arab states, largely hostile to Israel. And by I don't know how God works. And I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared yet to say that the Muslim God is not a God. We say you know, and I'm also not prepared to say that the Christian God in me does not know what he is doing. Now the Jews sometimes may say that well the God of Abraham is not you know the God Christians will see us in yeah. that God. Yeah. You know, so whether Christ is for them or there's going to be a messiah, that's another issue. But let's face it. You see, if these countries are around Israel, and it appears that the principle is that let decimate, you know, Israel. Now you have them, you know, in there. Okay, they are the core rights and can move up and down and all of that. Are we sure that that cry that uh, principle is going to be mitigated it will still be there you know so what will bring a real war situation i think with the middle east they've had their own you know they have their own this 48 thing that you pray to whether as war skirmish or whatever the seven, uh, six seven day war, six yes. day was six, sixty-seven, seven. and then seventy-three. Yes, you know, and even was the eighties where uh, who who killed so many of them in uh, Lebanon? It was not Moshe. Then there was uh, Israeli, you know, yeah. Yeah, prime minister, prime minister came, yeah. and a lot of them. What was the the Lebanon? Yes. Lebanon, this uh, okay, Hezbollah. Yes, you know. So we have more of those things. So the point really is. If the Palestinians have the chance, wouldn't they just take out Israel? And if we have a situation where they are just living side by side, they can move in anyhow. Because see, this thing about um, suicide bombing, yeah. you know, who started it? You know, and if you look at this release, the issue of suicide bombing, I don't think that they are very much into that. But they don't have to protect themselves. So I think that if we want to do something and say that, okay, we want peace, is it possible to create a separate state? You know, uh, uh, can the world sit down and say, okay, um, we don't know the acid antecedents, we have all of them together. Can we have a situation if, let's say, 
Palestine, but you see, you also have Palestinian Christians. You know, so yes. You see, that, that is where the, the, the problem is. You know, so that otherwise, you have a state, you know, a good state now, with all the resources, everything, they live separately and they are fine. But with the religious attachment to it, sometimes very difficult to rationalize religion. That is where the danger is. So you see, uh, Trump has taken a decision. Now, if he can make some overtures to the Arab world, to Palestine, and then they have to come in, there will be some proposals on the table. We are all tired of war. Uh, exactly. We are all tired of war. Because when war starts, you don't know who will be the victim. You are in your own country and something else happens. Even when they are playing their games there, you have very, very serious ramifications. So you see, it is something that we need people to sit down, think through what they say. I'm very sure that even if the Arabs, uh, Palestine and all, who want to fight, they also have to assess their strength. And they have to know the effect of that fight. And what they are really asking for, the bargaining. So I think right now, Trump has taken a decision, it would appear, the Western powers, the other, you know, France, Britain, Germany, others, may not directly want to support. But is there a black man somewhere? You know, is there a black man like, look, if we do this, we'll do this, and that's another black man. And then Trump comes in and says, oh, come, let's call the black, what will happen? And it's a very, very difficult situation. And, okay. uh, you know, prayers are there, mm -hmm. you know, and, but all of us are praying. Okay, counsel. And the same God, Somebody you ask yourself, why should God allow this? Okay, counsel. Counsel, I really understand your dilemma, um, and I believe the whole world is watching. But Reverend, for us as observers in Africa, we want the Katusha rockets that are being fired into Israel, terrorizing Israelis to stop. We want Israeli tanks to stop killing Palestinian women and children. Have we hit a deadlock? Or there can be a way out of this, a way out of this. Very difficult, very, very, very difficult. But I think yes, in every situation there can be a way out. Yes. yes. One, I think um, the world should recognize or should see the plight of the Palestinians as well as the Jews. Yeah, all of them have some some point, one or the other. The Palestinians have stayed on the land for over a thousand years. So you can't just say that they should all leave the land for the Jews. The Jews, yes, I was saying that the Jews even during the time that the land was under um, Muslim control, some Jews were still there. They've also lived on this land for over 3,000 years. Um, I believe, first and foremost, the world should not take size. I think the problem is still there and we can't solve it because the world has taken size. Yes, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, I remember uh, in 1973, when Africa broke diplomatic relations with Israel because of the 73 war. At that time, Israel was able to capture the whole of Sinai, Egypt, and then they were crossing into Africa. And then the whole Africa broke. Uh, so Dr. Nkromato was seen as an anti Semite, or he was pro Israel. Dr. Kwan Nkrumah. Yeah, at that time, I don't know much because um, okay. I was young, but um, I knew um, in the 70s, Israel had an embassy in Ghana. And it was shut down. Yes, uh, during the 73 war. I think our champion was the new okay. ruling. Yes. And, and so it's like the issue, the Jerusalem issue. Um, certain countries are saying that, oh no, no, we are not going to move our embassy to Jerusalem because the land, yeah, but the land was divided. If not the east, why not the west? So that as Israel will know that, oh, some people also support our cause, you see. But if they say that, oh, we are not going to move to Jerusalem at all, then I think they are wrong. Because when you UN divided the, 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 the land, they gave western Jer uh, Jerusalem to the Israelis, and then the eastern to the, the uh, Palestinians. Therefore, legally, western Jerusalem is for the Israelites, according to the 1947 agreement. Yeah, so at least if you can, if you want to solve a problem, you have to befriend those people who are fighting. 
No, and, and Reverend, symbolically, what Trump has done, mm -hmm. will it call for the Judaization of Jerusalem? Will all other races be pushed, gentrified, out of downtown it, Jerusalem? They are there, but Israel is controlling them. And in 1980, Israel declared that Jerusalem is their eternal capital. And I think they are, they said the parliament, uh, they, they, there's a law that no leader should change what they've done. You see, so now no Israeli leader can come and reverse what they, 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 they are doing now. For Jerusalem, they believe that that is the city that God gave to them. It's a spiritual city. Even they, they are also trying to put up the temple again. They believe that they have to put up the third temple before the Messiah come because the Jews are still expecting a Messiah. They do not believe in Christ. Now, um, the Muslims, as uh, my brother said, believe that where their two mosques are, the third holiest shrine in Islam. And then they, they will do everything to defend that. Yeah, and so the problem is the world should not see what Trump did as something that if we, 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 we want to create program out of what Trump has done, then the program will, 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 will come. But then if we decide that, okay, since Western Jerusalem is for the Israelis, why don't the world recognize that? And then maybe if they Israel, uh, they want to move their capital there or they declare their capital, why can't the embassies move to Western Jerusalem and then negotiate with Israel so that they will also release the Eastern Jerusalem to the Palestinians? Then there will be peace. But when we, we, we are attacking them, we, we, we are saying that we are not going to recognize um, Jerusalem, okay. when many resolutions okay. are all, always passed to attack the Israelis, okay. then they are putting okay. up defensive okay. posture. Okay, Reverend, uh, yeah. our viewers back home are interacting with you, the panel. Yes. And uh, someone says, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Yes. God gave the land to Israel. Yeah. And there's a quotation you have given. Yes. You say, they did not destroy the nation concerning whom the Lord commanded them. Yes. And that is the, the, the throne, the thorn in the flesh today. Yes. And another viewer says, if Jerusalem was for the Jebusites, as, yes. 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 as you indicated, Reverend, yes. why is it that the Palestinians want to make it their capital? Yes. Another viewer says, who named the area Palestine? Is it the Romans or who? Yet again, another one. If Jerusalem is not the capital of Israel, then we have to rewrite our history, including the Holy Bible. But care must also be taken to ensure there is peace in the Middle East. This came from Simon Kwame Amwako, Achimota Accra. Good evening. In my opinion, Trump lacks diplomacy as a leader. He is simply an Islamophobian. This came from Bibi Accra. And another says, I'm very happy to see Kofi Boni. Greetings to you all. Uh, Reverend, okay. I'll come back to you okay. pretty shortly. Counsel, what is your reading of the posture of the leaders on both sides? B.B., Benjamin Netanyahu for Israel, and Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority. Are they adding to the combustible mix? Or you think they are playing the right role to see an end uh, to this crisis? No, this is really the the Labour Party and Isaac Shamel no, there was one other I don't think that Rabbi, ra, ra, is it Rabbi? No, he was more like a moderate yeah, you know? yeah he was assassinated yeah. yes, you know, so and the point is uh, the two of them have taken some his, historically traditional positions right? Ishak Rabin that was Ishak the same, Rabin. Ishak Rabin yeah. The one, the Israeli Prime Minister no, was he was, he was a bit, he was, he was a, a moderate. Yeah. No, he was, he was, he was formerly an, I think, a, a general. General in the army. Yeah. There was one, a name by Sham, Sha, oh. Sharon. Sha Aaron, 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 Ariel Sharon. No, that was a neighbor. Ishak Rabin was the one who was assassinated. It, it, Rabin, I guess, was for the, you know, the, um, he was not for the Labour Party. Labour Party. Yes, but he yeah. was for the Labour Party. Okay. They didn't really kill anybody. Okay. You see, if you look at um, Netanyahu, he has cut some niche for himself that he knows what Israel wants and he will give them that. And that's why I get the because it BB the call. Yeah. You know, so when 
America did what uh, Trump did that, his response that you showed that you were a true friend. Yeah. That was his response. You know, so related by that. You know, so when you have two leaders who feel that historically they have to stand by what they think is in their nationalistic interest, interest yeah. then you have a problem. You have the force, you know, Russia may be there, Germany may be there, but really the real force is America. Yeah. And you have American president who also comes in and says that I'm not a diplomat. This is the way I see it and let do it. Sometimes you take that raw person and you think that he's taking a very wrong decision. But it may end up a decision that he didn't take so much time to think of. That is something that maybe the world should have you know, considered. You know, so right now, I feel that the time has really come. And I'm sure from the way he's posturing all of that, if tomorrow he leaves office, you would think that what they wanted to achieve, they've gotten it. You see, by the end of the day, I think that both of them yes, sir. must take some extra. They must look at their people, the nation, and look at their God and sit down and solve the problem. You see, as Reverend said, we have very difficult problems in the world. But it takes human beings to resolve those problems. Why? I mean, we are human beings. Excuse me, say we are not animals. Yeah. So even if it is the case that God has given us, and we take our prayers and fasting and all of that, tell God that God, this is the uh, conundrum we find ourselves in. So we are praying for the next 40 uh, days. You give us a sign, give us you know, a way out. And let's do that. And we are doing that for the interest of our people. Because, see, I do not think that in Israel, you know, uh, declaring Jerusalem as their eternal capital and moving this political diplomatic, you know, um, headquarters there will get something extraordinary that they will never otherwise got it. And I do not also think that the Palestinians now come to whether they are occupying it or you know, they will also be making something extra that otherwise they wouldn't make. This is all about religi religious and sometimes fanaticism mm -hmm. and all. Okay. So if they sit that way and say, look, it's about people, it's about human beings, it's about God's children, whether we are uh, Jews or Christians or Muslims, or, we are all God's children. So why don't you sit there and resolve this matter? So I think that they must take that position. You see, because otherwise, you know, I think they will be amassing, you know, um, uh, weapons, you know, build up. Look, let's see when we can attack and fight. And sometimes you see that you fight and then you are losing. Okay, and people are dying. And what is the essence in that? So I just think that, yeah, the two leaders, because if you tell it now, it's very, very clear to him. That is what we have asked for, and we have got it. Okay. And it's happening okay. on the day that they thought Thank that. You. Yes. So Thank I think you. Um, 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 Reverend, Rev Council and Reverend, mm -hmm. I, I decided to take a quite an unbiased position <laughs> because everybody knows my career <laughs> background. As someone handling diplomats, I handled two Palestinian ambassadors. Okay. So I'm trying to put my biases, diplomatic biases, aside. Um, Reverend, the Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. with a population of about 1.5 million to 2 million, mm -hmm. the size almost of Accra, yes. or half of it, yeah. it's like an open prison, the largest prison mm -hmm. on earth. Yeah. You can import cement, basic goods yeah. like fertilizer. Yeah. Don't you think strangulating them further could lead to a third intifada, another upheaval that could cost the lives of many? Okay, that, that, is, that is possible. But I remember... Um, about 10 years ago, Israel opened up, and that l led to bus, suicide bus bombings, you see. So the blockade is not, it was not just done because Israel wanted to blockade them. But then because when they were, even most, at that time, most Palestinians were working in Israel, they, they were living together. Israel wanted to open up, but then because they were still fighting for the land, they did not accept the gestures that Israel was making at that time. Then also, then the other question is, why is it that Egypt will not also open up hmm. for them? 
because you, do, do you understand? Oh, yeah, because the other side, yes. the Sinai, side the, 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 the share border with Gaza Strip. Gaza Strip. Yes. Why is Egypt also opening? Because Egypt is also, uh, Egypt has also crossed the, the border. They don't allow them. Because sometimes when they, they, they allow them, um, because they are still fighting, they don't understand why, if you need, they don't understand why their land should be divided. That's the problem. They think Israel has no right to exist. You see, and that's why Israel is also taking defensive position. And so, um, if the two can come together, as my brother was saying, and then um, sacrifices ought to be made. Yes, at least there has to now. If um, maybe Palestinians will give up, up Jerusalem for peace, why don't they? Why should they give up Jerusalem for peace? You see, yeah. So I think sacrifice Israel. I believe that if if there's goodwill, and then they trust one another, and they, they, they are not afraid of each other, there's going to be peace. But so long as the tension is there, it doesn't matter whether Trump um, has moved the embassy there or not. Yeah. But okay. if the trust is there, okay. and okay. they trust one another, okay. I believe they, they, there's going to be peace. Okay. Yes. And Council, let's widen the specter of the discussion to bring in regional and international forces. Turkey has come out to speak strongly against what has happened. Iran has got stooges or proxies in the region, Hezbollah and others. Where would we move from here? In fact, I think that is the other crucial problem. You see, Israel, in spite of the American support and whatever, uh, sometimes rather influences American or Western you know, attitude towards them. But the person, Palestinians, it will not appear that they take the decisions largely on their own. The uh, uh, Iraqi and the Iranian interests, very, very strong. Mm. Okay. Turkey, I wouldn't be so much bothered about Turkey. You know, Turkey says things and it's, it, it's more moderate. To me, it's more reasonable than this Iranian, Iraqi, yeah, Syrian yeah. In attitude. You understand? So, when you look at it from now and and those are countries that are clearly declare that Israel is not a state yeah. or must not exist. Yes, yes, yes. And they will do everything you know, to you know, uh, eliminate Israel. Israel. Yeah. Now, if even in Lebanon, we know the crisis there, if indeed Palestine itself can decide that look, we want to go it alone mm. and ignore the influences that are coming from our um, extreme Arab, you know, partners or friends. I think we can have in peace. You see, but this attitude that, look, that country there is an evil state and might be destroyed and whatever, this will not take it kindly. And because of the 48, whatever, you know, we let's call it war, yeah, war. and then let's have the 67 and 73 thing. Israel appears to be, you know, fortified. That look, these are states around me, bigger than myself, huge numbers, you know, but maybe in the force that I think support me, the, you know, eh, 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 they are God. They maybe they think that is stronger in the suit them, but you can't do that forever. Okay. You see, you can't do that forever. Okay. You must understand, and they must also reach out. Okay. You see, and that is why any time Iran, for example, hmm. if it's trying to build some, whether nuclear or whatever, Israel will go and attack. Because they know that when they build a nuclear weapon, they probably yeah, might attack Israel. Israel. Okay. And yeah. uh, gentlemen, um, a few more messages. Um, dear panelists, I want to ask, can't Israel squeeze themselves to develop vertically so they can build story buildings spreading to the occupied land? They should not spread to the occupied land in Palestine and they should leave the Palestinians alone. Please, if they are real scientists and looking for peace, they should do what they are required to do. So is this an issue of principle, an issue of needing more territory? Is it expansionism or an issue of principle? Well, um, in, in throughout history, people gain territory by war. They conquer in those days. In the, yeah. yeah. So sometimes, it's like when you, you read their, their history after 48, um, 67, 73, they think that they've conquered the territory. 
West Bank, um, Gola Heights, and we are not prepared to give it up. I would not say this hegemonistic something must still be there, you know, but it appears that it is in their uh, self-interest because they recognize that if those um, areas are not within their control, then surely their state will be in danger. I think that is it's more for security reasons. Especially, is it paranoia? Are they, are they being overly paranoid, Council? No, I don't think so. But you see, let, let's look at it. Look, just recently, was it in Indonesia? In Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, even in Bulgaria, yeah. incidents of people being hunted down, yes, Jews and, and abroad. The, and you know, we're even talking about um, um, suicide bombing. Okay. You know, people will decide that they don't want to live. The whole family will say that, look, we, we don't want to live. So we are prepared to kill ourselves in, in order to kill some other people. You understand? I mean, that is not, as I live here, I want to, if it's 100 years that God has given me, I'll be very happy for that. And maybe if you can give me more. I don't think that I'll be very happy and say that, look, you know, if I have some 50 years or so to die, let me die tomorrow or 10 years time, you know, happy, go and get, go and kill myself. I don't think so. But there are people who are prepared to say, okay, this is the thing we are fighting for. And we know that we are going to not war. But we are going to kill ourselves and in order to kill you know, some other people. Mm. They have that situation. So when you have them and they think that we can just, you know, just cross over the border, you know, and do something there, then that is dangerous. So right. I think okay. it's not part. It's the reality on the ground. Yeah. Okay. The reality on the ground is okay. there. We need to look at that very carefully. Okay. I take the final message and I take your final words. Yeah. And this one comes quite strongly on Israel. It says, I want to know which God gave them the land. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen God give land to any people before? The Jews are selfish and greedy, and they are trying to be smart by brainwashing the world with the so-called God, quote-unquote. It is time for us to reason. Gentlemen, right from the get-go, you admitted this is quite a sensitive issue, and uh, so we are tra treading quite cautiously. What is the best compromise either factions can make so that we see lasting peace. This should be your final word, sir. Yeah. I think um, they should put the land aside and try to develop a better relationship between them. Then they will, they will go to the land. You see, um, I mean that if they are f good friends, they can sit down and then decide what they want to do. As I said earlier on, there should be trust between the Jews and their Palestinian neighbors. They live together. They've stayed there for a very long time. And so if they trust one another and they believe that they are not afraid of one another and then they think one has no intention of this one another, then the, 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 the sacrifices will come. But then if they, they don't trust one another and then they believe that even if I allow you to, to be with me, when you, you, you can destroy me, then it's going to be very difficult. And then we'll be with this problem, I don't know, until maybe Jesus comes. Yeah, then I am going to, uh, I, 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 I will say that the inter international community should not take us, as I said earlier on. Yeah, we should see the reality of the situation and then advise both of them. Um, the, the Palestinians are receiving a lot of support, m monetary and military arms, etc., from maybe others, other sources. They have to stop that. And then those who are also supporting Israel should stop that. And then they should call as they were doing some, maybe do after Camp David, uh, there was another peace okay. accord in Norway, okay. I think. So okay. if they the Oslo, Oslo yeah, if they can revive that, I believe uh, it will help solve the problem. Okay. Whatever be the case, war can never solve the problem. Okay. Council, when all is said, what gets done? You've done a good diagnosis. What are your recommendations in terms of compromises? You know, it was Shimon Peres that I was talking about. Yeah. You see, I think... The father of Islam, if I'm not mistaken, should be Saudi Arabia. If that is the case, Saudi Arabia is morbid. Those statements that you hear from Syria and Iraq and Iran, you don't get it from Saudi Arabia. No, Saudi Arabia is not happy about this. So Saudi Arabia should, should play a role. Turkey should play a role. And then let's talk to Syria, Iran, Iraq, to understand that Israel must exist. Once that one is there, you have to sit down there and resolve the matter. If it's the same goal that we are all craving to, 
the God of Abraham, the God of Christianity, and Allah of Christianity. Our God, you have to sit down. If there are three, <laughs> that would be blasphemous, not so. Then they have to sit down there and in the realm, give us a way forward. Because if you don't do that, this thing will be there. You see, some, there are states like Africa and others that may think that maybe Israel is being right. But if we take the other, we go and support them, then we are at risk. You know, so they will be very careful. And sometimes, whether you want to say that people are being a bit cowardly uh, or hypocritical about that, because the whole Africa decided, okay, let's support you know, Arab against, in, uh, in against Israel. You know, the problems we are facing with you problems of oil and all. So I just think that let's have some level headedness, sit down, get country, sit together, discuss the issue, make some real you know sacrifices. Let's make sacrifices. let's go there that wanted to want to solve the problem and let's solve it. Right? If it is some uh, if God is speaking, then let's see the language of God so clearly. Because this was and whatever, I do not think that the God that we worship is also a God who is prepared to cause his own children you know, dying and being killed. And okay. The whole okay, Council. We take our final tranche of messages. And uh, this viewer says, Jerusalem is like a wife, which cannot be shared. The land belongs to Israel. Another says, I'm still confused. Has Jerusalem just become Israel's capital? And this final uh, text, uh, quite a mouthful, it says, I think that people should not attribute anything to God by saying that God gave me the land. Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was a righteous and upright person and obedient to God. In any case, it is the same Bible that says that God did not fulfill his promise to Abraham, Hebrew 11, 13, and his descendants. Hence, this assertion that Jerusalem is for the Jews is not appropriate. We've had in the studios Mr. Kofi Bonin, a legal practitioner, say thank you so much for making time. And Reverend Albert Douglas Ofori, a lecturer with Heritage Christian University College. Thank you so much, sir, for making time. All too soon, we've come yet again to the end of another edition of Worldview. So we come your way next week with another edition, Stay Blessed. And this program was put together ably uh, by my producer, Celestina V, with a competent uh, supporting team. Stay blessed and keep praying for Madagana. Good night. <laughs>